one counter scalp, so there's a sense of rotation. And um, it could, in a sense, echo the potential movement in the right hand half. The right hand half contains in this series. Um, I think it appears to be in motion in the yeah, poise in the position. This is a perhaps one of the most typical ones. This appears to be balanced about the point. If it was real, if it wasn't a painted thing, it would fall over because you wouldn't, you wouldn't perhaps be able to keep it just balanced. Would it fall to the right or to the left? Whichever way it fell, this, this point of connection would be beginning the centre of the rotation. And so the semicircles on the left hand side would rotate both ways. I find myself describing my own painting that you can see. I feel that I'm probably saying too much, but I'm not saying enough because painting might be a good part of business. And, um, mm. associated with landscape. And those artists who did make abstract painting uh, tended to make paintings that grew out of landscape. I feel I'm in a position contrary to that. I don't want to make paintings that have that, that, that sort of orientation. And if I'm talking about the difference between landscape and figure, I would rather they belong to the spirit of the figure. Um, that is to say, they are archive forms that have uh, a potential connection with the um, standard figures. Uh, my wife and I collect tribal art, we collect carved figures because we like um, many things about them. One is that they're so um, primal, they're so moving, um, they have such a presence to they also belong to the tradition of European modernist art. Artists at the beginning of the last century collected tribal art too. Um, and, and if you find in the paintings by people like Matisse and Picasso and so on, references to, to tribal art that was collected in Africa. And I like to do that too. Years before that, I used to collect. Japanese woodblock prints. As we all know, these were a big influence on, on the post impressionist artists, the artists like Van Gogh and Gauguin and so on. I feel that if you have things in your home, you, can, you want to connect them together. Um, so, furniture too, some of our furniture relates to the paintings. So, it doesn't end with painting, it fills it into objects. Other artists work that we collect, um, furniture that we collect, um, prints, wood carvings and so on. And um, I think there's a 
the spirit of uh, tribal sculpture in standing, standing forms. And I, and I call them abstract painting. I'm not afraid to admit that they, they have a strong affinity with the human figure. And after all, you take a form like that, it has legs, it has a head, it has a central area of the body. And so much in nature has this sort of structure that even an insect um, has, a, has a head and a thorax and so on. Indeed, in the beginning of modernism, there was, um, was an interest in, in discovering um, ideas about insect life and uh, people like uh, Farber and Metally, Metally um, wrote plays and poems that, that related to the discovery of the way insect colonies lived. There was a lot of interest in, in connecting um, in the science fiction included this as well, the idea of insect life being parallel to human society. And, uh, there, were, there were plays and theatre. Um, did some of the other ballets and, and um, uh, music that was produced at the time referred to uh, fantasy ideas like the beginning of science fiction. Human beings could be interpreted in terms of mechanisms and um, uh, robots and, and, and mechanical figures and so on were used in ballet. Um, and I, I constantly think about that and refer to that in my work, but I don't understand why that uh, energy was. Building up at that time. Hello. Hello. What a nice visitor. Yes. What's it called? How lovely. He can say go. He's doing better than I can do. One of the paintings, one of the three walls, 
is about the growth of human population, which was represented with one color, and the, um, the growth of all the animals we breed to feed ourselves with, which is an alarming proportion of growth. Pigs, sheep, chickens, um, uh, cattle, it was grown to feed ourselves. And that is increasing and increasing. The effect of that is that we're eroding the land, reducing the amount of forest and natural landscape with wild animals. And so the ratio of wild animals is decreasing and decreasing. So I made the ratio that these increasing proportions and decreasing proportions. I'll come to that in a second. The second, the second wall is concerning the result of human increase amount of greenhouse gases, those proportions of CO2 and, and methane and so on, which is because of that, the climate change and the amount of heat is being attracted. The last one, which this relates to, is about the consequence of warming planet and the sea level rising. The sea level warms. Increases in size, the ice caps melt, the water melt, the water falls into the sea, increases in size, there are holes within the ice caps where the dark sea is exposed, and the heat of the sun heats up the water, and the ice is warm in that sea. Uh, this is particularly relevant to Venice, where Venice is. It's at the same time the water was rising On the fourth wall, on which I did not have a painting, I had an iPad like this. Uh, whose iPad is this? Mine. You can. <laughs> I'll let people pass it around. But this was on the fourth wall, and it's continuing today. It is the truth about the statistics of what is happening, and you can see at the top, current world population, 700, 700, 7 billion, 7 billion, 400 million, and so on. That is now, you can see your nephew and your uh, being born, and you can see your grand grandfather dying because they're ticking over. And if you and look at this, yeah. and then you see just um, underneath this, this um, the number of trees that are being cut down every minute, basically. The loss of forest, the growth of desert, the amount of and that's live data. The amount of greenhouse gases we're pumping into the atmosphere, and the increase in sea sea level. Well, this is very minute, of course. This is, you know, like eight, eight uh, uh, dec decimals below zero. But this is what's happening right now. So this should frighten you. But this information that I wanted to display, so I didn't need to have a big text in, in the room to explain the pages because this did a job for me. Yeah. Yeah. You can look on one of my websites. 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 Log in at you'll get my website. And uh, if you go to, uh, I think it's under news still, and then then it's been on. I'm sorry, are you still doing this uh, tomorrow? I'm not able to, I'm sorry. No. I'm not able to. I'm going to catch it in a moment. So that was the wall drawing. Wow. 
So the, this was this was one wall, mm -hmm. this was the other wall here, and this was this one is you can see it's taking the one side of that thing. Um, this was the wall called base this painting on. Human population growing, animal to feed humans growing, blue, wildlife declining. There's a grand canal out of that window, the view of the Rialto Bridge. There you can see the sort of scale of that one. The dog came down and was only about five and seven. Mm -hmm. So that's the wall there that that painting is now based on. So Bob did a painting from it. Yeah. Yeah. In no, it's been painted over now. It's temporary. During the beam line. That's this side there. And there it is there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Mm -hmm. What do you think of people that does not get uh, enough, enough mm -hmm. Don't understand that. It's the same with all art, really, because what I find is there are some people who are very prejudiced about art, and I talk to them and I haven't looked at it anyway. Um, and we all know that it's very difficult to form an educated opinion about something, whether it's music or literature or performance, if you haven't given up some time and spent some time, you have to read. You can't, you can't have an opinion about literature unless you've read about 20 books just to start them up and then you begin to understand what, what, what's, what's powerful and strong and what's, what's uh, trivial and badly written. Same with music, same with painting. So I, I think understanding comes with knowledge. And knowledge comes with giving some time and experience with, with the medium that you're, you're addressing. You look skeptical. No, no, I think, <laughs> I think about the way that the uh, art uh, can uh, change it. Uh, I don't feel like a thing. Pure human's life. Pure human's life. I think about the. I don't know how art can change human's life. How the art can change human's life. <laughs> For the better? I hope. No, no. Yeah. I think that's just what we said. You are saying to me today. No. Yeah. Well, my 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 yeah. I think people just sort of looked at something that you know, looked at this in a totally different light and actually realised what you we were talking about the abstract art, you know, what it really was. It was amazing. And I, th I don't think you ever underestimate the power of that. Even if it was only a few thousand people that were supposed to pick it from the world. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. Where you are, where it's. Visual art. Change people. 
people like Thank you for coming, everyone.